Hello to you. My name is Dr. Hermann Raunig. I'm an otolaryngologist and today I want to share with you a video how I set back protruding ears. There are three main benefits in this new, newly developed technique. Firstly, I preserve all regular cartilage even in hypertrophic conchal cavity. So you might need it for grafting somewhere else even decades later. Secondly, I'm using absorbable sutures and therefore I'm avoiding all the problems related to permanent sutures. The most important point now is number three. You cannot find visible scars on these operated ears. I've done this procedure on more than 2000 ears and I got so many satisfied patients and this is what I was looking for and I'm looking forward to going on with that. In this video, I'm presenting the correction of the right protruding auricle. Here you can find a hypertrophic concrete cavity, a hypoplastic antihelix, a hypoplastic superior and inferior crus. In the lateral view, you can see the strong protrusion of the auricle with a hypertrophic concrete cavity. The lobule is fine. Here you see the before and after picture, two months post-op. To see the result of a symmetry and correction of both hypertrophic concrete cavity and all the mentioned malformations before. Now I will show you in several parts how to access the inferior cruise, the antihelix, hypoplasty and the reduction of the concrete cavity. It all starts with a good draping. With the draping you have to remember that you will work on the postericular space so you keep enough place when you, when you uh, drape it. First is the release of the inferior cruise. In this case you see it is nearly a pleasure or very uh, weakly developed inferior cruise and the technique is that you go parallel to the helical rim to the incision like you do it for the incision to the superior cruise. You start with the Simba Kantia and go ahead. If needed you can extend the incision with the scissors towards the Simba Kantia. You release the subcutaneously tissue to allow the scissors to make a good curved cut. On the anterior side you go subperichondriously and on the posterior side you go subcutaneously. When doing the cut you have to remember the result that should come out. So the extent of how much you will cut depends on the malformation of every different auricle. You see how immediately the upper third is relaxed by this incision. Now the antihelix plasty is also very unusual to the traditional techniques. You make some subcutaneous um, subtunneling on the posterior side of the superior cruise and on the anterior side you go subperichondrously. It's very important to preserve all the blood supply and nerve supply to have a good healing afterwards. You make this spreading with the scissors, the tip pointed ahead, not to make any perforation to the cartilage. You go down as far as needed, go usually the forest where the cord end of the helical tail derives. Now you use the diamond coated file and you work on the curvature on the proposed curvature of the antihelix so that you get a nice smooth antihelix curvature by the filing. You have to work as long until the tension is released. The hypertrophic conchal cavity, the hypertrophic conchal cavity corrected without excision of conchal cartilage uh, starts with the excision of a small strip of skin. Over this incision you get access to conchal cartilage. 
the main problem afterwards is to estimate how much the conchal cartilage is set back. How to reduce the height? You can use it when you are more experienced. You can use it with a scalpel and make a pinch or a stab incision into the cartilage, mark it that way, or you can use a, a 20 gauge or any other needle that is also dipped in into methylene blue or something else to mark the area or even without. The main thing is that you must not over resect too much laterally because it's much easier to extend the incision laterally than to augment it. So please do not over excise too much lateral. Now you prepare the excess to the medial part of the separated medial part of the conchal cartilage with the scissors and you mobilize the cartilage as much as needed to get excess to the most part so that you can circumcise it and make it uh, mobi mobile to the lateral part. When spreading, always take care not to perforate. In this case, by accident it happened. Now you make in this incision to, to partially disconnect the conchal cartilage from the lateral part. The same you do it in the upper third of this conchal hypoplastic cartilage. Now this medial part of the conchal cartilage that is like um, a cup will be incised, done some cross hedging on the cartilage to make it become flat and though uh, you should not perforate too much the cartilage to have still some, some shape. Now when you've prepared the conchal cartilage from the peri perichondrium, you do this cross hatching, you do the scoring with a scalpel or even with a needle if you like, and this will release the tension of the cartilage and make it become flat. By making it become flat, you can set back then the lateral part of the conchal cartilage and thus the height of the lateral part will become reduced. Beware not to leave tension, otherwise it will pop up, let's say after a month when the suture will become weak. To fix the shape of the lateral part, you can suture the cartilage with 4O polydioxanone in the desired position. Be careful that the knot is not on the medial conchal cavity to be seen so that resorption could cause some inflammation in this area. So put it more to the lateral side. Another modification to set back the lateral part of the conchal cavity is to use soft tissue pocket where you hide the, conchal car the medial part of the conchal cartilage underneath. You can even suture it with a short-term absorbable suture. When you fix now the lateral part of the cartilage onto the medial part, make sure that the shape of the auricle is preserved. You should use two sutures, one on the upper part of the medial third and one in the lower part, to make sure that the shape will get the desired result. For skin closure in all areas of the auricle, you can use polyglactin 910, 4050, whatever you like. 
don't make it too tight to allow for a, a good blood support of the wound itch. In case you have made an unintended buttonhole, uh, you have to suture it to get a good healing. Now suturing the superior cruz is also done with a polydioxanone and the reason is to get a nice curvature as you can see here on the of the superior cruz you make the knot so that it is positioned on the posterior part of the incision. The interior skin is too thin to, uh, to go through this absorption time of about six months on polydioxanone. Skin closure is also done with a short-term absorbable suture. In not every case there is a suture of the inferior cruise necessary because very often it helps only to to release the tension with the incision. You always try to make sure that the shape is how you like it. To fix the upper third you can make a mattress suture over cotton wool pads with for instance a nylon, 3O, 4O, whatever you like. The cotton wool pads prevent the suture to cut through the skin. Don't pull it too tight. In case there is some left tension, you can use a 20 gauge needle in the, like, like a scalpel, but don't cut, only make full thickness perforations through the cartilage to release tension. And you see how softly the cartilage bends back. I also will demonstrate you another modification of how to preserve the shape of the oracle with polyglactin 910. This is a short-term absorbable suture. You can do it with matras sutures uh, on the superior crews and the um, anti-helix and the caudal end of the anti-helix. But beware not to pull the suture too tight, not to cut the skin. At the end of the procedure you have to overcorrect the entire helix to help the healing in the position you want to have it. It is also very necessary that you pack the conchal cavity with cotton wool that's soaked in hydrogen peroxide to avoid any hematoma. Make a soft bandage with some swabs behind the auricle cotton wool over it and cover it with a, another swab to give a good protection. Now you can see how the head bandage is done. Especially for children it is always necessary to avoid some slipping of the bandage neither down nor upside. You make a control next day in the morning if everything is fine. It is also very important that you make the head bend very loose, that no pressure is on the auricle. Either you can get a skin necrosis or the first symptom is pain. In case of any pain, 
take the bandage off and control the wound. The patient has to wear the bandage for one week and when you take off the bandage, you clean the ears and apply a headband like the one you can see now. At home, the patient can have a shower, but it's very important that the patient puts the headband back on immediately after. The key point for your patient is to remember that the headband must stay on night and day for one or two weeks until you get the result you want. Again, to show you the result of this procedure shown or demonstrated to you on the right oracle, you see a nice setback and on the lateral view the antihelix is nicely curved, the inferior cruise and also superior cruise look natural and on the from the look behind you can see also a very natural postauricular space. The distance of the helical rim is nicely and nobody will even recognize that there has been ever an autoplasty and this is what I'm looking for.